Australia, home of the possum, cool surfer dudes, strange lingo, now worries mate, fair dinkum, lots of sunshine and the Bonza Barrier Reef. It's the biggest, most spectacular coral reef in the world, and what's more, every creature is linked to another. Just imagine one huge family tree dating back 18 million years. From the minuscule to the mammoth to the miraculous, they're all connected in Barney's Barrier Reef. and this is one of them. Well, it's the easy way. <laughs> there's the athletic way. Or there's the ambitious way. Really? We're spoilt for choice. Yeah, but unfortunately, the ocean community don't have planes, trains or boats, but they still need to find a way to get around. Luckily, they do have a wealth of weird and wonderful ways of wandering through the water. So how do they get from A to B? Let's find out. Full steam ahead, please. First up, a very mysterious mover. Oh. Wow. Is it a fish? No, is it, is it a turtle? Is it a whale? What is it? This Barney is a sunfish. Is it alive? I mean, no offence, mate, but it looks like someone forgot to finish you off. I know. He's a little weird looking for sure. Notice anything missing? Yeah, most of his body. But something in particular that might make him swim a little slower. Well, he's lacking something on the back end, like half a body. Yeah. The most distinguishing feature about the sunfish is what he doesn't have. He has no tail. That's why he just looks like a fish head. <sighs> So, how does he get along, and why is he only half-built? Well, he uses fins to propel himself forward. No one really knows why he has no tail, but they think that just parts of the dorsal and anal fins at some point were extended, and then joined back together again over the years to replace the tail fin. So that stumpy bit waving at the back is not a proper tail, but a kind of, well, pretend tail. I bet he's gutted. I doubt it. He's still a pretty big presence in the reef. They can grow up to one and a half tonnes in weight, so he knows his place all right. One and a half tons, that's like 20 Barneys. It's no wonder he doesn't miss his tail. Hey, it would take 16 average men to lift this big boy. Or 26 Barneys. Are you saying I'm below average? As if. Tell you something though, he's not the life and soul of a party, is he? Well, maybe not, but he still found an ingenious way of moving himself around. I mean, you try swimming without a tail. OK, keep your hair on. I guess he does qualify as an ocean mover. Well, just. like a domino. I know, they're pretty, aren't they? They're actually called triggerfish. OK, tell me more, triggerfish expert. Well, the triggerfish does have a tail, but like the sunfish, it's practically abandoned using it and instead uses its top and bottom fins. The reason these guys are more agile than the sunfish is because they also have these handy side fins that help them move around obstacles like corals. In other words, they have a great steering system. They look like they're kind of sideways swimming. It's a bit like a bird flying on its side. Why do they use their top and bottom fins more than the other fins, though? Well, they need to move around quickly, and this is a much more energy-efficient way of swimming. OK, so in other words, they're just lazy. No way. They have to swim all day, remember? This method just means they don't get tired as easily. Try it. It works. OK, so why do front crawl when you can mosey along on your side? Well, it works for me. Just like the sunfish who has no real tail, our triggerfish doesn't use his tail much either. He's also figured out that sideways swimming is the way forward. OK, so we've had two tailless travellers who both use pretty nifty ways of getting from A to B. So, who's our next magnificent mover? <laughs> Look at him. He's not an animal, he's a flying carpet. Yeah, he's quite a nifty mover, this one. This is a flatworm. 
a flatworm. Mm -hmm. Now, I think he's been a little shortchanged on the name front. He's not that flat, and he looks nothing like a worm. And it doesn't describe what a good mover he is. He should be called the rippling worm, or rather, the rippling carpet. I agree. This is a pretty speedy way of moving. It's because he uses literally his whole body to move around. The flexible flatworm. I like it. But what's the hurry? Well, they live on the ground most of the time, but sometimes they find themselves swept up in the water by a super strong current or chased by a bossy fish. That's why they came up with this speedy swimming technique. Well, does he ever stop? He goes on and on and on, this one. Oh, phew, I'm exhausted. <laughs> Me too. But I think I see the connection. Both the triggerfish and the flatworm use a rippling motion to get around. The flatworm ripples its entire body and the triggerfish ripples its fins. Exactly. These two are connected because they both go for a cool ripple effect. <laughs> Hola, mis chicos. Yo soy el pink fishy. Mi nombre es Danza Español. Are you okay? Do you like my Spanish accent? Mm hmm Okay. I'd like to introduce our next nifty mover, the Spanish dancer. Spanish dancer. I can't see any dancing or anything Spanish. Ah, oh, pretty in pink, though. Ole! This is a species of nudibranch, named after the flamenco dress of Spanish dancers. Ah, I can kind of see that, but really, I'm not sure you can call that Spanish dancing. No. Instead of the nifty dancing feet, they just have one big clumsy foot underneath their dress, which slides them along the reef. They're quite cool, though, and they can grow up to 50 centimetres, which is the size of a small poodle. <laughs> That's one big dress, all right. OK, so they do move, but I wouldn't say this is a great mode of water transport. Sliding in the odd flipping bend. Ah, that is where you are wrong, senorita. Oh, drop the accent, sorry. Let me introduce you to the Spanish dancer's nifty moves. And move that body, and bend, and bend, and work that body. Whoa, it looks like hard work. See, now you know why he needs to chill sometimes. And he swims a bit like the flatworm. He does indeed. Our senior Spanish dancer uses his whole body to move through the ocean, which connects him to the floaty flatworm. <laughs> and while we're visiting our Spanish dancer, I'd like to introduce you to our next crafty carrier. See the little pink shrimp just there? Oh, yeah, uh, bless. He is an imperial shrimp, and this is an example of literally you scratch my back and I'll scratch yours. Although in this case, it's the shrimp doing most of the scratching. Oh, yeah, I get left a bit. OK, down a little bit. That's it. Good. And hitching by the looks of it. Yeah, they get a good deal from our friend, the Spanish dancer. They get to nibble, poke around and have a free ride. They're very nicely coordinated, I must say. They are. They're the same colour as their bus, or nudibranch, which is handy because they are completely camouflaged. And this, together with the fact that the Spanish dancer looks tasty but actually tastes foul, completely puts off predators. This means that Shrimpy here can just chill out and eat and travel, knowing he's completely safe. A bit like travelling first class. With a bodyguard. So our pretty in pink shrimp and our glamorous Spanish dancer are always together. Can't get much more closely connected than this. They are constant travelling buddies. Who else is connected to the Spanish dancer? <laughs> Snails. Oh, get a move on, mate. We haven't got all morning. Give them a chance. Just because they don't have a pink frilly coat like the Spanish dancer doesn't mean they don't have a nifty way of moving. Pull the other one. They're so slow. So they still move, don't they? And only using one foot. Oh, this one's a little better. He looks like an army tank. But I wouldn't put my money on him winning any battle. This one's a giant triton shell. Ooh, a giant triton shell. Sounds like something off the gladiators, but it's just a snail. You may mock, but they can grow as big as a small dog. Well, whoop-de-doo. It doesn't matter how many different ones you show me, Gem. They are still too slow. They don't have to move quickly. They feed on sea stars who are also slow movers and sandy dwellers, so they don't have to look far for dinner. And they've always got their shell to retreat into, so why bother rushing? Because it's like watching paint dry. They can also dig under the sand to find food. Um, what are you doing? Oh, you know, 
Just catching up on some emails. Or should I say e snails? It's quite a slow connection. Yeah. You know, just till the snails get here. Okay, okay, get the message. Send. The sea snail licks the Spanish dancer through their ability to move Badly. on one foot. You'll have to wait for my next magnificent mover while we catch up on our connections so far. How did we get from the tailless sunfish to the sleepy snails? We started with our stately sunfish, who, with no tail, has to use his half-finished fins to transport him around. Our triggerfish saves his energy by a bit of sideways swimming. It's cool, but not as cool as the fabulous flatworm. Rubbish name, sensational swimming technique. But for a true workout, he can't beat our Spanish dancer, who can't dance, but boy, can they swim. They use their whole body for a proper aerobic workout. Unlike the lazy shrimp, who's just along for the ride. Then there's the, oh, oh, excuse me, the sleepy snails, who move around on one foot. It takes them all night to cross the ocean floor. So we've had sensational swimming, we've had bus riding shrimps, and we've had flouncy flatworms. How else do our fishy friends get from A to B? <laughs> Hello, handsome. Now, one guess why he's called a frogfish. He looks like a frog and hops like a frog? But not nearly as effectively. One thing's for sure, they certainly weren't first in the queue when swimming techniques were handed out. They have to use their modified fins as legs. It's their only way of moving. Wow, he's a real bumbler. But it's still quite impressive for a fish to be able to walk, especially one that looks like a frog. Although I still don't understand why he just can't swim off. Well, unlike most fish, frog face here doesn't have a swim bladder. That's the thing that helps fish to stay afloat. It's a bit like a rubber ring, so they have to stay at the bottom. Where's he going? Hey, come back! Yeah, it also means they can get blown away by the current if their fins aren't able to stabilise them. So actually, the fact that he can jump at all is pretty cool. He's a determined little geezer, all right, and jumping for him is like us trying to jump from the bottom of a pool with lead weights tied around our ankles. Oh, I won't be volunteering for that experiment, I thank you very much. Aw, he can't move very well, but at least he's too ugly for anything to want to eat him. Well, someone would eat him. Nothing goes to waste in the ocean. That's why Hairy Mary here is hiding in the weed, and these orange ones look like sea sponges. <laughs> Well, I guess frogfish are a bit cooler than my snails. So our ugly, clumsy but brave frogfish uses his fins to walk along the ocean floor, which links him to our slow walking snail. Who's our next ocean mover? <laughs> Introducing the epaulette shark. Ah, spotty shark. That's a new one. Yeah, he's a bottom-dwelling shark, so needs different markings so that he can hang out at the bottom unseen. He's definitely not as scary-looking as some of the other sharks. In fact, he looks quite comical. I know. He's very different from your average shark, this one. He loves paddling around in shallow water. Hang on a minute. Is he walking? Yeah, those fins are made for walking. It's weird, isn't it? Yeah, a little. So he's just taking a stroll among the shallows, then? Yeah, he can swim, but because he loves the ground so much, he's adapted his fins to also allow him to walk across. So when it's low tide, they don't have a lot of water to swim in, so they can just trot along from pool to pool. And it allows them to have a good rummage for any food. As they're strolling along, they can stop, have a nibble and carry on. He's another one who's got fins built for walking, just like the frogfish. It's another great way of getting from A to B in the barrier reef. And you're right, they're linked to the frogfish because they both prefer the pedestrian way. OK, next up. <laughs> now, we can't talk about travelling without talking about the ultimate long-distance traveller. And this is another shark altogether. Are we talking about what I like to refer to as the classic shark? Do you mean the shark that legends, films and all scary seas are made of? Absolutely. <laughs> These guys are the long-distance lorry drivers of the ocean. They keep on swimming and swimming and uh, swimming, morning, noon and night. They must stop to eat or take a nap. Well, some do, but our classic shark doesn't, or rather, 
can't. Why not? Even lorry drivers get a tea break. Well, sharks don't have a swim bladder. That's the thing that most sea life have to allow them to float without sinking. So why don't they sink then? Well, they've got a few handy devices to help them swim. They're shaped for one. It's a bit like a plane. It's designed to lift up as it moves forward. It's pretty streamlined, but they have several cool devices to help them in their superior swimming. Wow, they're pretty fast for a start. And that's because of their skin. It's made of interlaced scales that allow the water to pass over quickly, meaning they can move smoother and faster. But even better is their oil-filled liver. Oil-filled liver? How does that help them swim faster? Calling Dr Barnacles. OK, here's the science bit. Listen and learn. Now, oil is lighter than water, so it stops the shark sinking, which means they can spend more energy swimming and less energy floating. And those two elements combined with their super light skeleton means that these super sharks zoom through the water. This, of course, doesn't apply to plastic sharks. You see, there's nothing like the classic shark. Stamina, looks and super-powered skin. They've got everything. But what happens when it's dinner time? Well, they just nosh on the move. It's the ultimate ocean drive through So, unlike our epaulette, who can stop because he's based on the ocean bottom and doesn't need to swim as much, these other sharks just can't stop swimming, so are constantly on the go from A to B. Got it. So, we've had long distance, walking sharks and fish, and one-foot crawlers. Who else connects back to our epaulette shark? Marathon runners. Well, funny you should say that. What would you do if you had eight legs? Is this the start of one of your bad jokes? <laughs> no, seriously, what would you do? Um, OK, well, I'd take them out for a bit of a stroll and uh, then I'd enter a running competition. Really? Yep. Ah, see, great minds think alike, just like our octopus. Um, Gem, I don't think you can compare me to an octopus. It's a compliment. They're really intelligent. Well, like you said, what's the point of having eight arms and legs if you don't make the most of them? Do you think he's got a spare one? Hmm, he needs them all. They don't have any skeleton, so their arms are just muscle. Oh, so that's why he's so flexible. And their suckers work like those rubber bathroom mats and allow them to cling on for dear life if they fancy a breather. He does spend a lot of time on the bottom, doesn't he? A bit like our epaulette shark, who prefers to walk rather than swim. Yep, and that's the connection between our flexible octopus and our epaulette shark. They both find walking a lot less effort than swimming. <laughs> ah, pretty coral. Yeah, yeah, but where's all the action? After the octopus, I want to see some proper movement. Patience, Barney. See that spindly thing there? There are loads of spindly things. This is like spindly reef. Well, that particular spindly thing, that is a feather star. And that feather star's not doing any moving as far as I can see. In fact, he's clinging on to that reef for dear life. Well, he's only got spindly little legs. Or feathery little legs, more like. Ah, oh, I think they're cute. Look, they come in different colours. Well, the yellow one's slightly better, but really I'm not that impressed. Next. Well, OK, look at this then. Have you ever seen a swimming technique like this one? Yeah, it's no wonder they cling on. That's not swimming. That's flaying arms in all directions and hoping for the best. Does he know how ridiculous he looks? Probably not, but call points go out of the window when you're trying to survive, so they use their many arms to swim back to safety. Oh, and this might perk you up a bit. They have their mouth in their centre and their um, <coughs> bottom is located next to their mouth. Oh, now that is weird. And I didn't think there could be anything with more arms than the sprinting octopus. So our feather star is linked to the sprinting octopus because they both have loads of arms to help them move around. OK, time for a reef cap. Our ocean movers haven't missed a single trick when it comes to getting from A to B. And these frog feet might be made for walking, OK, but not always in a straight line when it comes to our friend, the frogfish. But a walking shark, I mean, that's a new one on me. Our epaulette shark is linked to Mr Froggy by their walking action. 
unlike the classic shark who has to travel for very long distances because he has to keep moving. Doesn't even stop for a cup of tea. Aw, oh, poor him. I know. And what about the running octopus with his eight arms to scurry across the seabed? Who's connected to the feather star with his funky arm moves? Look at him go. He won't win any awards for swimming, but he sure knows how to get from A to B. <laughs> now, imagine for a second you had no brain. OK, where are you going with this exactly? <laughs> OK, bear with me. If you had no brain, you wouldn't be able to walk, talk, eat or do anything, really. OK, Dr Gemma, I'm with you so far. Well, I just think that our next ocean move is really inspiring. Ta-da! <laughs> inspiring. These are just sea stars, Gem. Beginning to wonder what's happened to your brain. Nothing wrong with my brain, Barney. These guys literally have no brain, but they can walk with five arms all at once. Are you sure they're walking? Oh, yes. And not only that, they are coordinating all their five arms at the same time, together with many, many feet underneath the arms. Oh, but come on, they must have a brain. Nope. It's one of the mysteries of the ocean, and it's been baffling scientists for decades. Well, that explains why they move so slowly. It's a lot to think about all at once. Oh, yeah, and they smell with their feet while they're moving. <laughs> what, so they have smelly feet? What, feet that smell? <laughs> smelly feet. Get it? Huh? So, do they have one arm that does most of the work, so to speak? You know, like being right-handed or left-handed? Nope. All the arms share the work. That's what's so clever. If the feet on one arm have smelt something good for dinner, the rest automatically follow. Imagine if we had five legs. Do you think we'd even manage to walk one metre? And we have brains. That's true. Oh, wow, look, he's doing backflips. Well, wouldn't you if we had five arms? Yeah, but those groovy moves that the spindly feather star does would be fun too. You've got it. The sea star and the feather star are linked together because they both travel around with their arms. Next, please. <laughs> well, we couldn't do a show about cool, fishy ways of travelling without including this crazy contender, the crafty crab. Look at him go. He moves completely sideways. Now, you try running sideways. It's not easy. Yep, feels totally unnatural. Now that's travelling. I've always wondered, could he walk forwards if he wanted to? Well, I can answer that. Oh, OK, know it all. Because of the way their legs are positioned, they can only move sideways. Their limbs are kind of hinged together. And they seem to tiptoe everywhere they go, too. I know, running sideways on tiptoes. What an effort. It's no wonder they've got a quirky little running style. <laughs> And he's another one with loads of legs. He goes a bit faster than our brainless starfish, doesn't he? Yeah. Our crazy crab's more nifty, but he's connected to the sea star because they both have lots of legs to control. Now here's something special for you, the flame shell. Is it me or is this animal flashing? Is there an ocean emergency? Yeah, quite a light show, hey? Flame shells are pretty impressive. That's a nice display he's giving us there. But he doesn't do much else, does he? Ah, that's where you're very wrong. Look at him move. Wow, is that the same animal? Yeah, but guess how he does it. Now, this is impressive. Go on, then. So this is a mollusk. It doesn't have fins, arms or legs, hands or feet. So doesn't have much going for it, then, does it? Ah, yes, it does. This geezer uses something called jet propulsion. Oh, OK, so they push themselves forward. Well, hang on a minute, how? Well, they move using all they have, really, their shells. They open their shells, fill up with water, then snap the shells together, which forces the water out and jet propels them sideways. They don't go super fast, but it's an ingenious way of moving. Yeah, so they move just using water and shells. Well, when you put it like that, I guess it's pretty cool. They can't really move forwards properly, can they? It's more of an odd sideways thing going on, a bit like the crabs. It is a bit crab-like. So flame shells are connected to our crabs by their crazy sideways moves. <laughs> Hello, 
Roll up, roll up, see the magnificent performing squid. He flies through the air, well, see, with the greatest of ease. It's the stupendous swimming squid. He does look like he's on an invisible trapeze. You see, they are like little circus performers. They have no feet and no big fins. So how do you think they move? Hmm, good question. Well, the squid takes jet propulsion to the extreme. This is like a real superpower. Look at him go. How? Has he got a little rocket up his bum? No, it's a lot more simple than that. See those jerky movements he's making? Uh, yeah. Well, that's him filling his body with water, which he then forces out of his siphon. That's this bit just here. And that jets him forward. Cool. So it's a bit like filling this balloon with air and then letting it go. <laughs> oh! <laughs> or getting one of these squirty bath toys and uh, squirting somebody. <laughs> now that is a cool way of getting around. That is definitely the technique I would choose. I like his little skirt. Oh, typical. There I am talking about his superpower, and all you can talk about is what he's wearing. Well, those are their fins. As you can see, they're a bit, um, well, girly. And what's wrong with that? Well, that's my only problem. For an animal with such a super cool power, he really needs to think about a makeover. Well, I like it. You would. But I'd love to be a squid or a flame shell. Jet propulsion is such an awesome way of getting around. So the squid and flame shell are linked by their jet propulsion that helps them travel from A to B. Let's have a look back over our ocean transportation system. Come on, Barney. Come in. <laughs> The reef is packed with groovy movers, and what's more, they are all connected. First up are half-finished sunfish, who moves like a train on a bank holiday. He doesn't go very far, very fast, but has found a unique way of moving, despite his lack of tail. Then there's our sideways swimming triggerfish. He swims with ease, but not as funkily as the flatworm or the Spanish dancer with his water workout. The cheeky imperial shrimp hitches a ride on the back of the Spanish dancer who at least travels faster than the one-footed snail, who can only move on one foot. But don't wait up for him. But what about our walking frogfish? OK, so he doesn't walk in a straight line, but not bad for something with no swim bladder. I think the epaulet is cool. A walking shark, now that is a first. Unlike his cousins, the classic sharks, for them it's swim or sink. Linked to our walking shark was our eight-legged runner, the octopus, who runs with his arms and legs, unlike the feather star, who swims quite badly with his feathery arms. They hooked us up with the Sea Star with his five legs and super coordination. And one of the quickest, quirkiest movers in the ocean, Mr Crab, who couldn't move forward if he tried. How about the Flame Shell? They can really move, but not as fast as the Super Squid who jet propels himself across the sea. Getting from A to B in the reef isn't always easy, but our weird and wonderful animals always find a way, no matter how difficult or, um, uncool <clears throat> they might look. Come on, Dolph. It's me and you. We're coming! Come on, don't give up. 